This is the 2021 BMW 540i. For some of us, 540i is a very evocative name because 20 years ago, that car literally defined what an executive driver's car should be. Since then, things have changed. But the question is, how much have they changed? Let's find out. This is the seventh generation BMW 5 Series. The internal code name for the platform is G30. Now, when this first came out about five years ago, everyone was like, oh, how is it? You know, should I buy one? And I kept saying, eh, actually, no, don't buy this. Get a Honda Accord instead. And they, what? And I'd say, well, the Honda's about the same size and it's better to drive. I know it sounds crazy, but it was true. Since then, the G30 has been refreshed. We'll get to that in a minute. Who's the competition? Well, as always, you have the Mercedes-Benz E-Class. You also have the Audi A6 and, of course, the Volvo S90. As for the 540i itself, again, it used to define what it meant to be a mid-sized driver's car. These days, you know, it's kind of more of a luxury techno cruiser. However, thanks to that refresh, BMW is starting to get the 5 Series groove back. As far as design goes, the 5 Series is one of the last conventional looking BMWs left. You know, if you look at like the grills of say like the 7 Series, you know, it's this big. It's just literally massive. Or now, like the 4 Series or the new electric cars like the iX, they have those twin massive up and down grills. So this one, a lot of people, they're going to like it because it looks like BMWs of yesteryear. It is a good example though of why front license plates just need to be banned. It looks awful. Coming down the side, it reads like a sporty car. You have a pretty good dash to axle ratio. In other words, there's a lot of metal between the wheel and the door cut. Coming down the side, it's a bit plain, but not bad. Still has a Hofmeister kink like all BMWs used to have. Sadly, they're going away from this and no one really knows why, but it looks very nice. And you come to the back and Boy, this reads as BMW as any BMW ever made. So I think, you know, this car, again, conservative. It's not going to cause any controversy. And maybe at this point in BMW's journey, that's exactly what they want out of the 5 Series. If the exterior of the 540i is on the conservative side, so is the interior. And that's by design. Look, BMW, they make a product called the 8 Series, specifically the 8 Series Grand Coupe. And that's this sloping roof, four-door hatchback version of the 5 Series. What happened to the 6 Series? Don't worry about it. But the 8 Series is supposed to appeal to people that want a bit more uh, flair, a bit more fashion with their car. Uh, this is for bankers. That's for architects. Um, you know, it's not, it's not dull or anything like that in here, but it's just, again, that word. It's just a little conservative. Um, material choices are mixed. Like, you know, there's a huge hunk of soft rubber covering the dash and the top of the doors here. Do I want that much rubber in a car at this price point? Don't think so. And then this is metal, but it, it looks like plastic. And this is plastic, but it looks like metal. Uh, you know, more textured rubber down here. However, the leather is terrific. These seats, first of all, gorgeous dark brown chestnut color, lots of contrast stitching, some cool piping. The seat's design is very cool, and there's lots of nice leather covering the doors. And then we get to uh, the infotainment system. It's the, you know, this generation of iDrive is really good because they've been working on it for years and years and years. This is now a touchscreen. It's big, it's bright, it's legible. Uh, everything works, you know, it's just, it's quick. I have nothing bad to say about it. As far as space goes, uh, plenty of room. Again, this is a mid-sized luxury car, so it's not quite as big as like a limo like the 7 Series, but there's a lot more room in here than in, say, the 3 Series, especially if you're in the rear seat. Performance, good news! There is still an inline six-cylinder engine under that hood. This one is three liters in displacement. It's got a turbocharger as well as a 48 volt mild hybrid unit strapped to it. What does the hybrid assist do? Uh, torque fill. So in other words, to eliminate turbo lag, the hybrid motor spins a little bit, which is nice. It also helps with efficiency and we'll get there in a second. Um, as far as power, it's good. 335 horsepower, 332 pound feet of torque makes the 540i pretty quick. This one, all the power goes through an eight speed automatic transmission and it hits only the rear wheels. However, if you live where there's snow, there is an all wheel drive model available. 
handling. It's better than it was. I, I can say that. It's better than when it first came out. The refresh has helped. It's just not, I, I just want some more steering feel. You know, it's, it's not an understeering pig or, you know, it doesn't put a wheel wrong, anything like that. It's just not what I wish it was. And I know it could be because I've driven the M5 and that version of this chassis is out of this universe. So somebody from the M division needs to come over and just sprinkle a little bit of goodness all over this and we'd be good to go. What is impressive is efficiency. 25 miles per gallon in the city, which is good for a car this size, 32 miles per gallon on the highway. As far as safety goes, the federal government says five stars for the BMW 5 Series, their highest rating. The IIHS calls it good, both in terms of crash worthiness, and I think more importantly, crash avoidance, because it comes standard with a bunch of active safety features. However, as you're about to learn, this is by no means an inexpensive vehicle, yet you have to pay extra for stuff like cross traffic alert and adaptive cruise control. How much? All right, you can get into a BMW 530i that has a four cylinder for $55,000 thereabouts. If you wanna step it up to a six cylinder 540i, we're talking about $61,000. This particular car, it's got a couple options. It's right under 63 grand. Now, what about the competition? Well, if we go back to this base price being $61,000, that's $2,000 cheaper than the class leader, the Mercedes-Benz E-Class. It's about the same money as an Audi A6 and a comparable Volvo S90 can be yours for right around 56,000 bucks. If there's one thing I want you to know about the 2021 BMW 540i, it's that it's so much better than it was. The refresh has done wonders for this car. That said, I can close my eyes and still remember 20 years ago driving an E39 540i for the first time. It blew me away. I could not believe something that big could drive so magnificently. Now, BMW has decided that customers in this segment, that's really not what they're after. Instead, they want more luxury, they want more refinement, they want more techno, this and that. And you know what, for most people, that's probably true. The problem is for me, I'm left wanting more and my fear is that for some of you, the same might be true. To check out our latest vehicle rankings, go to motortrend.com cars.